God is so good to me. He's amazing. I just love him. I just love him. We just love the Lord because he's so good to us. And the song says, I will exalt thee. I will exalt thee, you are my God. There's nobody else like God. There's only one true and living God. Amen. We're going to sing it. Um, my hiding place, my sweet perfume, my treasure, Lord, you are. Amen.
water on our heads. The peace, what we need in the season of trouble. The sea, the, 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 the peace that we need when we need our, our hope to be resolved. The peace we need when the storms of life comes up against us. That's who you are to us, Lord. And here we are another time on another day. We're giving you thanks for your blessed holy presence. Father God, we don't deserve your love. We don't deserve your kindness. We don't deserve your unmerited grace. And it's not because of the goodness that we have done. But because you have loved us with an everlasting love, that you have given us your son, Jesus Christ, as a sacrifice and an atonement for our sins. We don't deserve you, Father God. We don't even deserve your love. But God, you have been so gracious. You have been so favorable. You have been so kind. And here we are today singing about the goodness of God in the land of the living. I would have fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. You told us to wait and be of good courage and that you will strengthen our heart, Father. So Lord, we are waiting upon you. Many of us have come into your house today. We haven't even opened our mouth to say thank you. But God, I am so grateful because you have brought me from a mighty long way. And I'm grateful for your love. I'm grateful for sharing your mercy and your passion and your kindness, Lord, upon us. Your house today. We thank you, Father God, because you don't even need us. But we need you, God, and we are empty and we are lost without you. You have become our hiding place. You have become our refuge in the time of trouble. You have become our, our rock in which we can stand upon. You have become our firm foundation. And Father, for this I praise you and I honor you and I bless your holy and majestic name. Worthy is a lamb, worthy is a lamb. You are slain from the foundations of the world. And Father God, we recognize who you are this morning. And we, Lord God, we remain in your care as we leave our burdens at your feet. We carry our cares and concerns to you right now. And only you, God, can fix what we need. We see troubles all over this land. We see the political uprising and wars breaking out in the Middle East. But God, we are comforted to know that you are our refuge. You are our hiding place. And you are, you are the lifter of what we need. You are the lifter of our heads. And Father God, we have nothing to fear because you are with us. When sickness comes our way, we can call upon the I am, the I am. We can call upon you in the midnight hour. We can call upon you when we're down and out. We can call upon you when we're sick in our body. We can call upon you because God, we know that you will hear and answer our prayer. Father God, there is nothing too hard for you. Nothing that you cannot do. Because we know that you are the God who can do all ordinary, extraordinary things. We know that you are the God who is wise and in order of all that we need. So, Spirit of the living God, I pray, God, that you'll just fall afresh upon all our hearts, our minds, our souls. We give you our needs right now. And whenever we come with God, Whatever we come with God, whatever we come with God, whatever the answer may be, God, is in your hands. You, Lord, I pray that you will deliver us, God, from the hands of the adversary and set us free. Right now, Father God, we don't know what to say. We don't know what to do. But God, we let you lead us. We let you, Lord God, hold us. We let you comfort us. We let you, God shower your love upon us your unconditional love this morning and Lord we say thank you because you have done it already 
We say thank you because the answer is already on the way. We say thank you because you know our heart's desires. We say thank you, Father God, because you live. We say thank you because you are not dead. We say thank you because you are still alive. We say thank you because you have have redeemed us from the chains of sin. We say thank you because you have planted us on, on a high place. We say thank you because you are our King of kings and our Lord of lords. And we say thank you because without you we can do absolutely nothing. We say thank you because God, you remain faithful. And for this, Father God, we praise you. For this, we honor you. And for this, we give everything over to you right now. Lord, lead us from the helm. Because God, we are lost without you. And we praise you. And we adore you today. Take full control of everything we offer up to you today. We leave nothing out, Lord God. We pray in the name of Jesus that even what we give unto you, it will be a sweet offering an aroma of praise in your nostrils, even the offering we will give unto you. Let it not come out of a heart that is just tugging and warring as what to give you. Let us give you the best of what we can. Let us not be like Cain, who gave you the worst of his offerings, but let us give you, Lord God, what you desire from our hearts as we bless your name. The very word we will hear from the preach word that you will comfort our hearts and that you will set our week week up, God, as we bless and we lift up your name in praise and worship. We remain prostrate before you, God. We remain at your feet, God. We remain before you as children, as sons and as daughters before you, God. Lord, I pray you will have your way in the midst of this troubled world, in the midst of our congregations. I pray, God, that you just lead as you ought to, as we, Lord, surrender right now. Have your way, Father, as we say thank you once more. In Jesus' name we pray. 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 We look to you, God. We look to you. We look to you, Father. Because we know that every door that you open, Lord, we know that no man will close. We know that you are the truth. We know that you are the life. You know, we know that you are the way, the way maker, our miracle worker, our light in the darkness. That's who you are. In Jesus' name. God is in our midst and his presence is here with us. Hallelujah. You may be seated. We're going to get ready for the announcements and then we're going to go into our offering. But the reality is for me, I could have stayed right at this place, my hiding place. The song is so relevant for us more than ever. It's relevant for the people in the Middle East. It's relevant for the Christian there, no matter what they're hearing, no matter what Israel is hearing, that God is their hiding place. And the word of God declares in Exodus chapter 34, verse 14, For you shall worship no other God, for the Lord whose name is Jealous, is jealous for you. Heard it this morning when Jesus told, when God told Moses, I am that I am. I heard it again from Sister Daphne as she was praying that he is the I am. All that we need, it's in our God. And knowing him, his name is jealous. It really means he is Elkanah. The consuming fire. The jealous God. He's jealous for us. He don't want to share you with another. Sister Nevon.
Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. It is such an awesome privilege to be here another time in the house of the Lord. Not of anything that we have done, but because of the goodness of God. I just want to greet each and every one this morning. I want to greet our Bishop Taylor and Sister D. I want to greet all our brethren, our visiting friends. Is there anyone visiting with us for the first time? Or just second time visiting? No, but we welcome each and every one this morning. Just a reminder that we need to continue to pray for all those who are sick, all our elders who are shut in. Our brother and sister Devley will be going on holiday and they're asking the church for your prayers, please. The homegoing service of our beloved Mother Reed will be held on Wednesday, the 17th of April from 12 noon and service will be held here at Nurse Street. Just a few information from the family. They're asking that all those who would like to view Mother Reed, as some individuals have been asking, her body is currently resting at John Heath and Sons, and viewing is between 9.30 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. on Tuesday the 16th, and from 9 a.m. till 10.30 10 on Wednesday the 17th. The service will also be streamed for those who is unable to attend, and if you're unable to attend the service and the interment, they're asking that you still attend the reception at Tapton Hall. They would love for you to come and break bread with them. Continue to pray for all our families who you know who are bereaved. Please join us every Sunday morning for prayer at 7 a.m. and Mondays at 7.30 p.m. via Zoom. Bible study classes are held weekly on Tuesdays. We have the Kingdom Living class and that will start at 7.30 via Zoom. Please note that the Spotlight class this Wednesday is cancelled, but this will be resumed on Wednesday the 24th of April. So that's for the Spotlight class on Wednesday. New Converts group continues at 6 p.m. at the Family Life Center. And this is held with our sister Gillian Anderson. And this is for all those who are waiting baptism. If you've been baptized in the last two years, this class is also for you. Or if you just want to know more about Christianity, please speak to our Reverend Anderson and she'll be able to advise you further. The Women's Discipleship Ministry will be meeting on Friday the 19th of April at our Family Life Center at 7.30 p.m. Also, our Women's Discipleship Ministry Spa Day is on Saturday the 20th of April at St. Paul's Mercure Hotel. And all those who have booked, you're asked, please meet at 10 a.m. at the hotel. Further instructions will be given to you when you arrive. So that's 10 a.m. at St. Paul's. On Saturday the 27th of April at 11 a.m., the single parents group will be holding a first aid awareness course. Please speak to our sister Movi, to our sister Ioni, if you intend on attending this first aid course. Holy Communion will be on Sunday the 28th of April. And on Sunday the 5th of May will be our baptismal service. And if you want to know about baptism, or if you are saved and you're not yet baptized, we're asking you to speak to our Bishop Taylor or a member of the leadership team. Please note that our United National Convention will be held at the ICC Newport Wales from Friday the 23rd to Sunday the 25th of August. Information has been sent via our WhatsApp page, but if you haven't got that, please see myself after service and I'll be able to make that available to you. All Golden Ages, you're asked to please see our sister Millie at the front of church immediately after service. I also want to say a big thank you to all those who attended our member celebration dinner on Friday. It was a wonderful time. But I want to say a big, big thank you to Bishop Taylor and Sister D for hosting that celebration service and for thinking about, you know, the members it was held in aid of all you. And we just want to say to both of you that we thank you we had a wonderful time and we appreciate what you are doing. God continue to bless and to keep you both. <laughs> and finally, before I take my seat, just to remind you all that we have a young man who will be celebrating his 94th birthday on Tuesday, which is our elder Makanoff. So on Tuesday, he will be 94 years old. God bless you all. God, hallelujah. Celebration time yesterday, my daughter celebrated her sweet 16. Praise the Lord. 
I'm not clapping like that because I'm broke, Bishop. She broke me. Jeez. Praise God. So I really thank God for her and for the young man who is celebrating 94 years. Hallelujah. Praise God. God is good. It's time for us to give. And because God has given us his best, we're now going to give him our best. We're going to dig deep. We're going to open our purses. And we're going to give into the kingdom of God. It is always better to give than to receive. So as the worship team come and the ushers, or great ushers who are doing an awesome job, we're all going to stand and we're going to celebrate in giving unto the Lord. And I believe that, and I am so grateful that Sister D has already prayed for the offering. But even as they put themselves in their position, there is one thing for one minute, two minutes I would love to do. If we all can stand, just stand. We're getting ready to give. I need us to pray for person that you know that is sick, to pray for the shut-in, to pray for those, and I'll tell you, even, I don't know how the service is going to go, how, what pastor is going to do, but there are people in this house that you have burdens. There is heaviness that you're carrying. But he is your hiding place. He is your safe refuge, and we can't miss it. So, you may be prayed for after, but I just want us to just for one minute, just call someone name that you know that is sick. We know of Brother Evans. We know, we know of a lot of folks. Let's just right now for one minute, just go into prayer. Hallelujah. Father God, we just thank you. We just want to take this time to remember our shut-ins, Father God. Those that are home that can't make it, they're sick in their body, Father God. We speak for your healing because we know that it is by your stripes that they are healed. We pray, oh God, for Brother Evans. We pray for Sister Evans. We pray for the strength. We pray for healing. We pray for deliverance, oh God. We pray for the people of God in the name of Jesus. Those who would have loved to be in your house. Those who would love to be with the saints, oh God, and they can't make it. And for many of them, sometimes they feel so down and out. Father God, I pray that you would just touch them right now. Sweet Holy Spirit, would your mighty hands just rest upon them. Embrace them and let them know that they are not alone. Because you promise that you will never leave them. You promise that you will never forsake them. And for those who are in our midst who came out and, oh God, they're not feeling well. We speak healing right now. In the name of Jesus, we speak for healing in their bodies from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. Be it unto them, Father God, in your awesome and wonderful name, Father God. So all the names that has been called out, oh God, by your people, oh God, you know them by name. You even know them before we have called. We thank you for your touch that you have placed upon their life even right now. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen and amen.
Glory be to God. I'm here for an audience of one. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm only here for God. I don't know. Maybe you're here for something else, but I'm here for God. To magnify God. And he's what? He's so sweet. I don't understand. Sorry. I've been through too much to not praise him. <laughs> he's pulled me out of some stuff. I got to praise him. And the reason why I praise him, his word tells me to praise him. Hallelujah. And it's that time right now for his word. It's not just for us to hear the word. But it's to apply the word. Father, in the name of Jesus. As Bishop Taylor is going to come to bring that word that you have given unto him for us. I pray our heirs would be alert to hear. And oh God, that which belongs to us, we will take it, Father God, and apply it. Practice your word. We just don't want to know scriptures. We don't want to know where texts are. But we want to know that your word is workable in us. That we are living it out every day. And Father God, I pray that this word will bring strength. This word will encourage. This word will be a prophetic utterance for someone who needs to know that they are not alone, that you are with them and you are there to take them out and to take them to a high place that they can soar in you. So Father God, let the atmosphere in the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, let your convicting power, your comforting power, you being our counselor, counsel someone as we hear this word. And I pray right now for a greater anointing upon Bishop Father God. The giftings that you have placed in him for this house. We call for its manifestation in its fullness. For your glory, God, and your honor. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Bishop Taylor. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let me let me give God a praise for today. Amen. What a joy and a, and a pleasure it is to see you in the house of God. You may be seated. Thank you so much to all our, our visitors and friends. We greet you in Jesus' name. Amen. I, I would like to also just add my, my thanks to all of you for, for the event that took place on Friday. Um, I'm glad that you had a good time. And I'm glad that some, some of you were able to dance and celebrate. And <laughs> they said drop foot is a term they use, isn't it? But I think I dropped my hip <laughs> afterwards because... Uh, I must be, must be getting older. Ho thankfully, by Sunday morning, Saturday morning when I woke up, the pain was gone. But Lord have mercy, it was. It was <laughs> Amen. But um, I, I give God thanks that we can just enjoy ourselves in the presence of the Lord. Um, I give God thanks that we have a freedom. Um, I, I, I remember as a young boy growing up, um, I've, I've been hearing some music here being played that you, you wouldn't have got away with when we were growing up. They, they would have called you worldly wise and all that kind of different stuff. We've come a long way. Uh, we, we must learn to enjoy ourselves in God. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. We must learn to enjoy ourselves in God. You have one life to live. And if you're one of, the, one of these pe people that are, that are in your house and, and you hear a gospel song, come on, like we do in our house, we dance. I don't see why I can't dance outside. I, I'm serious. I think that we have put things up upon people which are not godly. And we should not for, for, from people more than the Bible says. So I will, I'm determined to enjoy my life. Amen. And so when I go home today and after I've eaten a big meal, if I hear a gospel song, I'm going crazy. I'm going to dance. 
because I, I, I love God and I love the freedom that the Holy Spirit brings. If you want to stay in that old world, it's up to you. I mean, many of our young people have left because they played a reggae beat. Because they play, play, played reg, so-called reggae chords. And the older, older generation couldn't have it. And they called them unsaved. They called them ungodly. And our young people walked out. But then when Roll Jordan Roll comes on. Oh, you, you, you know what I'm saying. Anyway, I digress. I'm talking about freedom in Christ. Freedom in the Lord. And when, when your conscience bears you well, just enjoy yourself in God. So thank you so much for, for, for coming. Um, I can't promise that we'll do it again next year. <laughs> Expensive thing, this. <laughs> but um, yeah, as God gives us grace, um, I, I wanna, just want to say on behalf of my wife, as well, again, thank you to all of you in the name of the Lord. I want to share a word with you today. Um, I hope you won't be afraid of the words that I, I will use. They say that words are only big words when they're not explained. But when a big, so-called big word is explained, it is no longer a big word. It's just an ordinary word that we use. Is that all right? So stand if you would, please. We're going to read from the book of, of Hebrews chapter 10. We're going to read seven verses there, seven or eight verses there. Hebrews chapter 10. We're going to be reading from verses um, 32. I'm, I, I, there's so many of you in church today. I'm so glad to see you. Yeah. Amen. Are you smiling? It's, it's a wonderful thing. So many, and there's more coming. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. I've graduated from preaching to five people. Yes, I'm used to that. And God has blessed us today. Hebrews chapter 10. <coughs> if we can have it up on the screen, please, that would be really useful because I don't have my note. My... No? Come on, be quick, be quick. Okay, bring. Thank you. Hebrews chapter 10. We're reading from verse, oh, we're there now. From verse 30, 32 rather. Okay, let's read from the screen together. One, two, three, let's read. Verse 32. But call to remembrance the former days in which after you il were illuminated, you endured a great fight of affliction, partly whilst you were made a gazing stock, both by reproaches and afflictions, and partly whilst you became companions of them that were so used. For you had compassion on me in my bonds and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods, knowing in yourselves that you have in heaven a better and an enduring substance. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. Amen. For you have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come, and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Verse 36, again please. For ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. Let us say amen to the reading of the word of the Lord. Thank you so much. You may be seated, saints. Thank you. Amen. <clears throat> I want to talk to you today on the theme, eschatology and your faith. Eschatology and your faith. Tell your neighbor it's not a big word. Eschatology and your faith. Back in 1988, there was a British telecom advert that some of you may remember. It was... Um, it was the one where this actress called Maureen Lipman telephones her grandson to hear, yes, you know it, to hear about his exam results. <laughs> and having been told that he had failed most of his exams apart from poetry and sociology, 
she replies, and I'm paraphrasing, if you've got an ology, you haven't failed. You get an ology, you're a scientist. Don't know how many of you remember that, but we'll check it out on YouTube. And so the pursuit of an ology continues among our students today, even today, as we study subjects like anthropology and ontology and psychology and biology and, and all the other ologies. But today I want to talk about eschatology. It's not a science degree, it's not a, it's not a scientific study like all the other ologies, but it is very vital to our Christian life and our formation. Somebody say eschatology. Translated for the, from the Greek noun eschaton, which means last, and the Latin noun ology, which means study. Eschatology is a study of biblical prophetic record or the, what we would say the doctrine of the last things. So when we talk about um, eschatology, we're talking about studying of things which are to come. Amen. They're down the road. They're, they, are, they are not yet. We are looking forward to them, but they are not yet. Within the biblical context and the biblical, and it, it really is a, 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 a biblical term, we, we look at things like the rapture. It's to come. Is that right? We look at things like um, God's reign on earth. It is to come. We look at things like the tribulation. It is to come. But today, I, I just want to simplify things and, and talk about our, our eschatological view in terms of the fact that Jesus is coming again and how we ought to live because Jesus is coming again. Amen. Yes. And I also want to frame it within the context of the believer's journey. That's your journey and my journey and the coming of Jesus Christ and his reward. Amen. The word eschatology may not be a word that we use very much in our daily vocabulary. And some of us might even be hearing the word for the first time. But I would say that we engage with es eschatological themes in many ways that we may not even be aware of. I'll, I'll give you some examples of some eschato eschatological scriptures. Um, the Bible says in Titus chapter 2 and verse 13, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. That is an eschatological scripture because it looks ahead. Looks ahead to something that all of us are dreaming about and all of us are, are believing for. It is not yet, but it is to come. First Thessalonians 4, 16, you know this very well. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel. That's eschatological, it's in the future. And with the trump of God, and what? The dead in Christ shall, oh saints, you better help me today. The dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be, come on saints, caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. I'll deal with that a little, a little bit more in a while. Philippians 1 verse 2 is eschatological in its essence. Being confident of this very thing. That he which began... Amen. He which began a good work in you is able to perform it until when? The day of Jesus Christ. It is not now. It is yet to come. It is eschatological in its application. Amen. And again in 1 John 3, beloved, now are we the sons of God. Amen. And it does not yet appear. What we shall be. Did you hear that? It does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. 
Why? Because we shall see him as he is. And every man that has his hope in him must purify himself even as he is pure. Amen. We may not have viewed it as such, but there is much eschatological essence in some of the, even the songs that we sing. Songs like, Blessed Jesus, hold my hand <clears throat> as I travel through this pilgrim land. There is a friend who walks with me, leads me safely through the sinking sand. It is the Christ of Calvary. This would be my prayer, dear Lord, each day to help me do the best I can. For I need thy light to guide me day and night. Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. <coughs> Let me travel. I, I, I got to deal with the whole song. Let me travel in the light divine that I may see the blessed way. Keep me that I may be holy thine. And what? Sing redemption song. <laughs> Someday, I will be a soldier brave and true and ever firmly take a stand. As I onward go to daily meet the foe, blessed Jesus, hold my hand. But he didn't finish there. He said, when I wander through the valley dim toward the setting of the sun, Lead me safely to a land of rest. If I a, I a crown of life have won, I have put my faith in thee, dear Lord, that I may reach that golden strand. There's no other friend on whom I can depend. Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Glory to God. Hallelujah. This song speaks to us about what we are going through now. But it is eschatological in that it speaks of a better day that is ahead. We sing this song, better days are coming. By and by. When we reach that city, come on somebody, in the sky, sorrows will be over. Oh God, joy will come at last. Better days are coming. Hallelujah. Amen. Better days. Amen. And then Jesus, in his prayer, when he teaches us to pray, when he asked him, he said, one of the things Jesus said, which was eschatological, is, Thy kingdom come. Oh, thy will be done. I heard my wife pray earlier on and uh, the situation that we're going through in Israel, the Middle East, in your own life, tells you that his kingdom has not yet arrived in the way he wants it to come. It is to come. It is in the future. But we're asking God to keep us until we reach that place. Christians are to be confident and look forward to a time when the kingdom of God and God's ultimate rule, I want to tell somebody that, 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 that the president of Russia will die. The man in South Korea will die. If we live long enough, you're going to hear on the news that they drop dead. It's only God will last forever. So let them carry on with their wickedness. There's coming a time it will finish. It will come to an end. But our God lives. I said our God lives. And we want to see his ultimate rule. We want to see it take place on this earth. We want to see an end to the corruption. There's coming a time, hallelujah, where we are reigning on earth with Christ. You won't have a crazy Australian man walking around and stabbing up people. It ain't going to happen because we'll be under God's rule. I said we'll be under God's rule. Men's rule is corrupt. No matter who you put in power, they are nasty and raggedy and corrupt. We need a God to come. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done, Lord. Amen. 
Christians are to be confident and look forward to a time when God will come. And this eschatological promise is one that we look forward to and it helps us to live in the here and the now. This is my point, brethren. When we have an es eschatological viewpoint of God, it helps us to live in the here and the now. Oh, if you don't believe me, let me tell you what Job said. Job cried out to God. But when Job was in pain, Job said, For I know. Oh, you're not hearing me. I know. I'm covered in boils. I'm full of dog spit. I'm dirty. I'm nasty. I'm cut up. But he says, I know that my Redeemer lives. And he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin, worms, oh yes, destroy my body, yet in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself. And my eyes shall behold him, and not another, though my reins be consumed within me. Somehow in his sickness, Job was able to comprehend that what he was going through in that season, amen, was only pointing to something which was to come. Amen. Something greater, something that he was excited about. Amen. The one day that he would see the Lord. In the main scripture that we read, the author closes out the chapter with a Strong eschatological theme. Theologians are not sure. or They argue about who wrote the book of Hebrews. Some say it followed Paul's clarity and Paul's style, etc. So it had to be Paul. But there's not universal agreement about who wrote the book of Hebrew. But the writer seems to be pleading. Pleading with every believer. Amen. Pleading with every Christian not to give up your way of living, but to persevere because better days are coming. And so the writer says, do not cast away your confidence. Amen. Which has great reward. For you have need of endurance. So that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he who is coming will come and will not tarry. He goes on to finish off that saying that the just shall live by faith. But I love this. He says, if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. I, I, I would like to remind you of the song. That brother Andre Crouch wrote, and you know it's one of my favorites. I've sung it from this pulpit through it all. I've learned to trust in Jesus. I would, I, I would invite you, saints of God, back to the day, if you can remember it, when you first gave your life to Jesus Christ. I wonder if, if, if in your mind you could just go back to that day, whether it was a year, two years, 20, 40 years, I don't know. But the day that you gave your heart to Jesus Christ and your heart was filled with joy. Oh, come on, say it. I said your heart was filled with joy because the Spirit of the Lord had come in based upon your faith and you, and you gave your heart to Christ and all of a sudden you become one with him. Your sins are, 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 are gone. And, the, and in the week, the days and the weeks afterwards and the years, you developed a walk with God which became richer and richer. But then for some of us, unfortunately, life kicked in. Life kicked in. And sometimes the joy that we had when we first found the Lord somehow dissipated. It could have been a trouble, troublesome child. 
It could have been a difficult husband. It could have been a, a difficult wife. It could, have been, it, it could have been a whole range of things. All the things on the outside mixed up with what was going on on the inside. And sometimes we lost our way. Huh. But the writer is saying, don't. Cast away your confidence. Because in your confidence in God, there will be a great reward. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is why my mother did not give up her faith. That is why when she sat in a nursing home, blind and couldn't see. That is why when she cried and wept every time we went to see her, she said, Winston, the only thing I want, not even so much coming out of here, but I want to, I want to have my sight. Glory be to God. But I also remember the encouraging words. You know what I'm talking about. That she would speak. Because in the midst of, of what she was going through, she saw something greater. In the midst of what she was going through, she understood. This is not the end. These walls I'm surrounded by. This is not the end. <clears throat> but if I don't cast away my confidence, I shall surely receive a reward. And I believe that when my mother closed her eyes in death, she didn't close her eyes in death worrying about material things. All she wanted to do was see Jesus. You know, you have some people in church, all they want to do is see Jesus. <clears throat> you know, so you have some people in church who are tired of our politics and tired of the shenanigans and tired of the nonsense and the garbage and the rubbish and the prejudice and the hatred and the bitterness and the bad mind and all they want to do is come into the house of God and bless the, the, their God and go home and worship him in spirit and in truth. Do you know that there are people in the house of God that don't want to hear your foolishness and, 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 and your corrupt talk? We just want to see Jesus. Hallelujah. That's why some people won't visit your home. Because you have nothing to say about Jesus. All you have to say is about life and what's going on in, in life and, and in church and, and with people. But there are some of us who want to hear Jesus. We get up in the morning, we want to see Jesus. We get up in the morning, we see him in the sunshine. We see him in the grass. We see him in the hills. We see him in the mountains. We see him in our wives. We see him in our, in our husbands. We see him in our children. All we want is Jesus. There are people in here who have no ambition for church politics. They simply want to see Jesus someday. Brothers and sisters, eschatology must inform the believer's journey in, G in Jesus Christ. Jesus will return in power and love for those who he's going to reward for their faithfulness. But we need to have endurance. We need to keep going. You must allow your light to go out. We have need of endurance to receive the promises of God. The toughest and the most discouraging trials are when we are called to obey God's will. When the fulfillment of his promise seems so far away. This is why we need endurance. Because I've been hearing from a child that Jesus is coming again. I need endurance to keep going. To believe that God is not a man that he should lie nor the son of man that he should repent. That whatever he says in his word, it will happen. We need endurance. I wonder if you touch a neighbor and say, neighbor, you need endurance. Touch up another no, no, and say, neighbor, no backsliding. <laughs> One more time, you need endurance. Sometimes in this life, sometimes within the context of serving God in the church, Sometimes what we do for other people and what we do in the church, let me talk about the church now. Sometimes what we do is not appreciated. <laughs> we, 
We have this God of heaven who calls us to labor in his vineyard. Amen. He calls us to a place of responsibility to do the very best that we can. But there are always those who will sit on the sideline and find fault with whatever you do. Glory be to God. Let me say that again. God in his wisdom, he knows what you are capable of. And by his spirit, he convinces you to answer the call. And you hold up your hand and you say, Pastor, yes, I'll go for it. And you do the very best that you can do. You work real hard behind, behind the shadows. You, you go for it. You pray. You seek God. You do your absolute best that you can do. But there's always somebody on the sidelines who's saying it ain't good enough. It ain't good enough. It's not how I would do it. <laughs> it takes the grace of God. I said it takes the grace of God. And a sure calling upon your life to keep going in the midst of what some people have to say. But praise God when you understand that there's something coming. That there's something down the road. We may not get our reward. i I got to tell you this. When my former pastor Cyrus Scott... When he heard I was going to become a pastor, he called me to his, to, his, to his house and he sat me down and he said, brother, I'm praying for you. He said, I'm, I'm praying for you. He said, Winston, he said, wherever you go to pastor, that's what he told me. He said, wherever you go, he said, you will do your best the very best you can do. But he said, hear me, young man. You will never please everybody. He said, no matter what you do, they will criticize you from north, east, west, south, all over. You can't win. But when you know who you are in God, you must understand that you may not get the reward down here, but there is a reward coming that no man can take away from you. This is why you must not cast away your confidence. I'm talking to somebody. I don't know who it is. Whoever you are, do not cast away your confidence. God will reward you. <laughs> that is why this pastor sleeps at night. I sleep good. I said I sleep good because I am not looking for a reward. Down here, some people will say amen, but they don't mean it. Some people will say I love you, but it's not true. If God could open them up like a can of beans, you would see the rottenness inside. You can't look at that. You must look unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher, somewhere down the line of your faith. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. One day, he's going to give you double for your trouble. Did you hear what I said? One day, he's going to give you double for your trouble. Amen. Amen. There are some of you here today, under the sound of my voice, who need to understand in a way that you've never understood before, that when God called you, he didn't make a mistake. He has called you to lead others. He has called you to be a blessing to others. And there are days it seems like your efforts are underappreciated come on somebody underappreciated the weight there are some of you the weight of opinion of, of, of people's opinions weigh too heavily amongst uh, upon you and and if you will come and tell me how you feel I'll tell you what I'd say I'd encourage you but I would tell you to shape up Shape up. This calling is a heavy calling. 
It's not a joke. Whenever you lead God's people, whenever you do something for God, you must stand trial. You must be tested. But if you keep your eyes on the prize, you'll be able to go ahead. You have need of endurance. As you serve God, as you live life dedicated to God, always remember. Always remember to frame your living. Frame it, frame it, frame it. Frame it within the context of the fact that Jesus will come again. And there is a reward for your righteousness. There is a reward for your holiness. Saints of God, you know what I'm saying is true. You know what I'm saying is true. You know, don't you? And even in a church like this, you can do your best. And some people will not say thank you. But you cannot depend. You cannot serve God based on an earthly thank you. Oh, there's got to be something on the inside which is looking for something which is to come. Because when he says thank you, that's going to be a thank you and a half. And he's going to bless you. The righteous judge is coming. And he's going to give you what you need. <laughs> Amen. I remember working so hard one year when I was a youth director. So hard. I mean, I work, I work, I work. Disappointment. And then at the end, they, 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 they brought me to convention and they, they gave me a prize. We said, we have a gift for you. It was a little book. <laughs> a little book. And I know that the thought was good, but the book, you know, the, the writing was so tiny, I could barely read the book. It looked like it, it, looked like it was brought secondhand off a shelf. <laughs> and you look at the book, and you just take the book, and you thank God for the book. And then you keep on working, you keep on laboring, you keep on working for God, because you know something better is coming. <laughs> Some people call it a crown of life. Whatever you want to call it, I want that from God, don't you? Touch your neighbor and say, keep on going, keep on going, keep on going, keep on going, amen. Keep on going so that you may receive the promise. Saints of God, it's not while you're ministering. And let me, let, 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 let me br bring this down to its very basic components. When I talk about ministry, please, please move away from the thinking I'm talking about a pastoral ministry or a credential column ministry. I'm talking about any ministry, anything that you do for God, do it with eschatol eschatology in mind. Do it understanding that your reward is to come. Do it understanding that you may not be recognized while you're here, but there's coming a day that the Lord will bless you. Be an eschatologist eschatologically minded means living and worship and, and serving in the now but paradoxically living and worshiping and serving for the future amen to all the leaders in this church to all who labor for the lord in whatever field that you labor I want to encourage you today that even though you may not see a reward today there is coming a day when christ will return i give you your reward Another Bible text that speaks it in an eschatological way, 1 Corinthians 15, 19. If it was in this life, only that we have hope. We of all men, we would be most miserable. <laughs> Isn't that true? I'll come on into a minute why that's true. I'll come on to that in a minute. But it's so true. For the, for, for, for the believer, if it was just this life alone that you, that you took your comfort in, we will be men most, most miserable. The Bible also says, let us. <laughs> I think they're getting carried away. can hear every word you're saying. <laughs> Let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season, 
we will reap if we faint not. If you were to ask any believer today, what is the reason why they live the Christian life? The majority would, they would break it down real simple and say, simply this, one day I want to see the Lord. And believers of old had this passion for seeing Jesus. And they would sing songs like working for a crown. You remember that one? Oh, I wish I had someone to play for me. Uh, shall I be content with one star on my crown? When heaven's bright portals I see, the answer comes back. Strive a cluster to win, and the way will be brighter for thee. Oh, I'm worth king for a crown. You remember that one? I'm worth king for a crown. I'm worth king for a crown. We shall wear by and by. When, Lord, must I work? Shall I go in the heat? To white and to white harvest fields. Where work is so great and the labor so few. And the promise a bountiful yield. <laughs> yes, all kinds of work I will find in this field. My task then quite plain I can see. And now having found it, I'll labor and wait. Day by day for the lamb. <laughs> that was slain. Hallelujah. <laughs> Oh, God, and how shall I get these rare crowns, gems for my crown? Must I wait until heaven I gain? Oh, glory be to God. Yes, yes, but toil here for the master's renown. Day by day for the lamb that was slain. Oh, I'm worth king for a crown. I am worth king for a crown. I'm worth king for my crown. But I, I shall wear by and by. Amen, somebody. Eschatolo eschatology. Right the way through the song. Amen. As a writer says, I'm working for a crown. I don't have it yet. Oh, God of mercy. <laughs> Some of you are old, you know, you don't have it yet. I know you want it now, but it's not yet. It is to come. There is still work to do. And I shall wear it by and by. So let me say this again for the final time in this message. Our eschatological thinking must inform our lives and our ministry. We must embrace eschatological thinking if we are to serve God effectively in this time and this season. You know, as a church, we've been looking at the theme rooted in Christ, go and reimagine. And I say to you, brother, brother, brother and sister, we can be rooted in Christ because we know that our future is certain. I said, stay rooted in Christ because your future is certain. You shall receive a reward. <laughs> Even the church is rooted in eschatology. Matthew Dentist writes, Christianity is unique in that it arose out of the Jewish hope and expectation that a Messiah would one day emerge to save the people of God at the end of history. And arising out of that proclamation that the Messiah had come and will come again, the church began. Christianity has been, from its birth, inherently eschatological. The early Christians believed in the, in the, in the imminent return of Jesus Christ. And they believed it would actually take place during their day. And this is why they were so energetic. This is why they were so busy going about God's work. Because they actually believed 
that the coming of Christ would be in their time. And so what they, went, what they did is that they went about. And they spread the good news of Jesus because they believed that he was coming in their time. And this is how the church grew. They did so in the midst of death threats. They did so in the midst of persecution. They moved with urgency because they had an expectation that Jesus would return. And Jesus' coming was the driving force behind their living. Some of us, the driving force behind our living is the next job or the house, that four-bedroom detached house you want, the Mercedes, the BMW. That is a sum total of your desire and then you think that you've arrived. Can I tell you what happened to me? Why God shut down that pride and that desire. Let me tell you what happened. I saved up. Sister Duffy will tell you. I saved up because all my life I wanted a BMW. And I saved my money and we saved. And when we had enough money, we said, let's go and get the car. The the other one was, I, I don't change cars for joke. If I change a car, it's because the car I have is dying. And so we went out and we brought this silver BMW. The car crisp, nice wheels, beautiful silver BMW. Lord have mercy, when I drove, when I sat down driving it through the streets of Gloucester, I felt so proud. I would pull up beside people by, 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 by the traffic lights and they would look at it and I would go. <laughs> I felt so proud of my BMW. I parked it at the front of the house, and while I was washing the dishes, I would look at my BM, my Beamer. <laughs> God, you got to hear me. But within a couple of days, if I speak the truth, I looked at the BMW. And God said to me, this ain't it. And I said, oh my God. You mean to say I put all my, all my hopes and dreams in, in a BM and God says this ain't it? Material possessions is not it. Where is the BMW today, Trevor? It's in a scrapyard. Mash up. The things that we hope for, are dreaming, are dreaming for, are going co- to come to an end. The very husband that you dote over will die. The house you have, someone else is going to have it. So go and decorate all you want. Someone's going to take your yard. Only what you do for Christ will last. I said only what you do for Christ will last. My home is in heaven just waiting for me. And when I reach there, happy I'll be. My home is in heaven. No rent to pay. Hallelujah. My Jesus paid it. (laughs) Paid it all for me. I'm talking to somebody today to tell you stop putting your hope in your material possessions. They will die with you. Put your hope in that which is to come. Jesus Christ our Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Stay rooted and grounded in the truth. Whatever you're doing, soup kitchen, amen. Sunday school, youth department, musicians, worship team, audio visual, whatever you're doing, do it for God. I said do it for God. Stop looking for a reward, it may never come. Even pastor, when he loves you, may not, say, may not say thank you when you most expect it. But there's coming a reward. Hmm. Lord Jesus. Don't look for what people will give you. Look for what God will give you. At the end of your days. I'm closing now, but let me speak one more time. To the power of embracing eschatological thinking. If God spares my life on October the 17th of this year, will find me and my wife celebrating 20 years 
in pastoral ministry. 20 years. Yeah. Thank you for the hand clap, but I didn't say it for no hand clap. In that time, I have performed many funerals. And without fail, I have noticed that the funeral service for the ungodly is not the same as a funeral service for the righteous. Lord Jesus, help me. Let me say it again. The funeral service for the ungodly is not the same as a funeral service for the saints who have died in Christ. What I found out is that even though you prepare a message and you show care and you show love and you encourage the family beforehand and you prepare the service and you prepare your musicians and you want to do a good job, it's a completely different service. Not because I want it to be that way, but because it is. There are certain things I can't say in an, an ungodly service. There have been certain things I've been told not to preach because we don't want to hear about God because he died without Christ and they said we don't want to be discomforted. Hmm. Oh Lord Jesus. Amen. It is a different service. I said it's a different service. The difference being that the family and friends of the Christian believer have a hope. It's a hope that makes us not ashamed. The ungodly have no hope. Let me say, they have no hope. That's why they sit and they cry uncontrollably. That's why they, they throw up doves in the sky at the funeral. They have no hope. They cry as if they'll never see their loved one again. But the Christian does not act that way. The Christian buries the believer with eschatological hope and expectation that one day they shall rise again. But I would not have you ignorant, brethren, concerning those which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which also sleep in Christ, Christ shall bring with him. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not prevent those which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with a voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. That's why Christians... Do not weep as the ungodly weep. Wednesday coming, you'll see what I mean. The woman of God will be buried and the children may weep. But it's a different kind of weeping. It's a weeping that says, Mommy, goodbye. I can't stop the tears, but I'll see you one day. I said, I'll see you one day. When God cracks the skies, I'll see you one day. We live with this beautiful eschatological hope that one day we will see Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't know if Paul had an ology. And I have to hold up my hand and tell you I don't have one. 
I don't have an ology, but what? Let us recognize the power of eschatolo eschatology in our faith. The reward for what you're doing, saints of God, won't be seen now. It ain't going to happen. It isn't. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to tell you that. You may get a hand clap. Somebody may give you a card. Somebody may give you an offering. But that's not reward for all you've done. There's something greater coming. It's not now. It's in the future. So my, my word to you today is, don't cast off your confidence. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. Glory to God. Glory to God. For we shall see him as he is. Saints of God, do you want to go? Do you want to see him? Do you want to see him? <laughs> and I'll close by saying this. And some of you may, may, may not agree with me, but I'll tell you how I feel. Even if there were no streets of gold, you know what I want? I just want to see him. I'll say, oh, okay. I saw your steer. Okay, Lord, thank you. I just want to see him. And I want you to be there too. And I don't want you to cast down your faith. I don't want you to give up. I don't want, don't want you to, to allow the trials of life, the pain of life to distort where you're going. We have a hope that makes us not ashamed. It's not here right now. It's eschatological. It's coming. It's coming. Better days are coming. May you be blessed in the name of Jesus. I'm going to work you before we close. Stand if you would, please. I'm going to ask you to pray for somebody that their faith would not fail. I've been in church long enough to know that whenever you're doing something for the Lord, you can get real weary. And it's almost like, the, almost like you're taught, don't say anything. Because if you say anything, people will think that you're weak. And so we don't say anything. And then we carry the burden of laboring. And sometimes all we just want is an arm around the shoulder and say, sister or brother, I'm praying for you, you know. My sister, my brother, you don't have to tell me your intricate business, but I want you to know today that I'm praying for you. Don't cast away your confidence. Don't cast it away. Your reward is sure. Will you grab a hold of somebody now and just pray for them in the name of Jesus? Pray that they will be strong. Pray that they would not lose their way. Pray that they would not lose their confidence in the Lord. Because there's a day coming when you shall receive your reward. Go ahead and grab that person now and pray for them. Would you pray, please? Father, we thank you, Lord. Thank you for your word, mighty God. Thank you, Father God, for all that you have given us. Thank you for the challenge, Lord God, that you place in our midst, in our lives. Thank you for the faith that you have given us. Thank you for the strength to keep going in the midst of all the things that we as ordinary human beings have to deal with in life. Heavenly Father, we are, we are careful this, this afternoon, Lord, not to believe or to expect that our, that our rewards will be here and now. But Father God, we labor, we toil, we work, we go forward even though we do not see Oh, God, the thank yous and the appreciations, Lord, and the well dones and the congratulations. For, Father God, with eschatological eyes, dear Lord, we view something which is to come. 
something, dear Lord, that has been promised by you. Something better, something glorious, something wonderful, something that is ideal for all that we've been through. The Bible describes it double for our trouble, but it is more than that, Lord. It is the glory, the joy, the victory of seeing Jesus our Lord and having him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. Come now, I'm going to make you master over many things. I pray for all those in this house, all those who are watching on the screen, all those, dear Lord, in every church of God and in every denomination, Father God, who are laboring for you. I pray, dear Lord, for those who have been laboring for a long time. They've been working hard with no recognition for a long time. I pray, dear Lord, that they would not cast off their confidence wherein there is great reward. But I pray, God, that you would give them the strength I pray, God, you would give them the wisdom. I pray, Lord, you would give them the knowledge, the courage, the understanding, the faith, the willingness, the wherewithal, the determination to do all and more of what you have called them to do. I pray for every hand in this church that is weary. I pray for every mind that is tired. I pray for every spirit that is a little bit broken. I pray in the name of Jesus, but by your spirit, Lord, you would rejuvenate your people and help them to remember your promises which are yea and amen. Your promises which are sure. Your promises which are resolute and written and solid. That every one of us, dear Lord, who labor for you and love you shall receive a reward. It is an eschatological promise. And we live within that, that framework, dear Lord. And we will not go back. And we will not give in. And we will not give out. And we will not throw down our weapons. But we lift up our sword and we will put on our armor. Oh God, our shoes, the breastplate, we will gird ourselves, dear Lord, and go again. Knowing, Heavenly Father, that we do not look for a reward down here. But we are working for a crown that we shall wear by and by. Thank you for those precious hands. Thank you for those precious feet. Thank you for the people, even in this house, dear Lord, who labor and labor for you. May they be blessed by this word. But more than that, Lord, blessed by your promise. That all will be well. Better days are coming. By and by. Bless your people now, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. How many of you have been blessed this morning? Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. And even as we get ready to leave this service, if there's anyone in this house would say, you know what? If I were to die today, I wouldn't see him. I want to have that assurance. I want to have that confidence. That when I leave this earth, that I will spend my eternity with Jesus. If that's you, and just raise your hand and we will pray with you. You want to make it right that one day you will meet him as your Lord and Savior. Is there anyone in the house? Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm going to just ask you to come. We just want to pray with you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Bishop, I'm just going to ask you to pray with these two person who want to make it to know when they leave this earth, it's Jesus they're going to see. Bishop Taylor, if you can come and just pray with them. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. In the final minutes, if you're here and you'd like to answer the call, please come. We're not going to hurt you. We just want to pray with you. 
So if, if anything did happen to you, you're not, you're not afraid, you're not worried, but you're, you're, you're living with this promise that the Lord will look out for you, the Lord will look after you, that you'll be safe and secure in his arms. If you're here, come now. We'll wait just 30 seconds for you to come before we pray. Hallelujah. Do you know that you're not certain? Everything in your heart is telling you that what I'm telling you is true. You know that, that, that if you die, to, die today, you're not sure about where you're going. In fact, you're fretting right now. Lord, Lord, Lord what's going to happen to me? If you're here today, you want prayer, come. Ain't, 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 no, ain't, ain't nobody looking at you. Just come. Just come for prayer. You're not sure. We want to pray for you that you, you would know God. So many people have gone ahead. They've died in the assurance of knowing, knowing God. Are you here? Do you know him? Would you like to know him? Just another 15 seconds. I'll wait for you before I pray. Hallelujah. Would you come? At this time, if you're not saved, you don't know the Lord, you're lost without him, you need the Lord Jesus today. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come and we thank you, Lord, and we pray for even those at the altar who have come as they respond, dear Lord, to something that, that, that is, that is um, triggered in their heart, Father God, by this call to the altar. Father God, we, we know, Lord, that you don't lie. We know, Lord God, that your word is concrete. It is rock solid. The Bible says that God is not a man that he should lie. Lord God, you want to save every person in this room, in this building. You know the hearts, dear Lord, of those who came forward, but you also know the hearts of those who stayed in their seats. They come because maybe they don't want, want to be seen. They come because they, 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 you know, they, they don't want to be seen by people or, 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 or people mock them or, or feel a certain way. Some have stayed in their seats because they're genuinely afraid. And I know, God, right now that even in their seat, Father God, you can meet them where they are. I pray, God, that they, that, that they would open their hearts to you. I pray, Jesus, that today, this day, the 14th of April, God, whatever day it is, dear Lord, that the wrestling in their spirit would come to an end and they would surrender their lives to Jesus Christ. Oh, God, there is no loss in coming to Christ. There is only life and life forevermore. And as your people stand at the altar, whatever it is that they need, what, what, whatever questions they're asking, Father God, forgive them, oh God. Touch their hearts. Turn their hearts back to you, God. Turn their hearts back to you again. Father, this is the kind of God that you are. You don't drop us and dump us and leave us. Oh God, you want to save even the sickest sinner, the worst sinner. Sometimes that's how we feel. All the madness that we've done, the places that we've been, the people that we've hurt and damaged, the reputations that we have. We sometimes think that we're too dark, too dirty for God to clean us. But God, you are a wonderful cleansing God. Oh God, just by your word, just by the power of your grace, Lord, you can save your people from their sins. So touch the hearts of your people now. But also, Lord, my prayer can never be enough. There must be a surrendering in their heart. And as they surrender in their heart truthfully before God, then, Lord, they will be born again. Lord, you will take them and you will accept them. And they will be new creatures in Christ. So thank you for your word, God. Just continue to save those yet to be saved. We bless you in Christ's name. Amen. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise God, praise God. As we are about to leave here, what a great day we have have had in the presence of the Lord. It's always so great fellowshipping with the saints. So we are about to leave, and I just want to say this benediction. But after the benediction, we are going to sing happy birthday to the young man who is going to be 94. That's going to be our last benediction. But I want to leave this scripture with you. Therefore, beloved brethren, be steadfast immovable, abounding always in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor 
is not in vain in the Lord. Shalom, the peace of God. So let's all sing now for the young man happy birthday as we leave. Let's greet him. I don't know what style you're going to sing it in, so I'm going to call Brother Trevor. Okay, come on. And uh, is Anisis here as well? Anisis, where are you? Come on. This is 94, 94 years you are good, you see? <laughs> come on, give it and come on, Anisis. <laughs> oh, turn, turn around so everybody can see you. Oh, look at this. And we've got Anisis, 16. So we're going to just, <laughs> just start going up. <laughs> Okay. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear brethren. Happy birthday to you. We wish you many more. We wish you many more. We wish you. Many more, we wish you many more. Happy birthday! One more time. To May the dear Lord bless you. 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 Give them a big round of applause. Give them a big hug. 